Hi, my name is Ben Christensen, and I'm going to show you how I created this lightning strike effect with Houdini and Unreal. So inside Houdini, we need to generate our lightning that's going to come from up above, down, into our lightning sword. So let's put down a geonode and call it lightning strike charge. And then we're going to put down an add node to create a point on the ground. And we also want to create a point about five meters up. This is going to tell the Lightning Labs node where we want our lightning to be formed. Let's merge them. Then we can drop down the Lightning node. As you can see, it generates us some lightning. But this is too many arcs. Inside of Niagara, what we're going to do is instance just one arc and rotate it around ram randomly to get us something interesting. So let's set our arcs to one. We can control our shape here with this curve. And the goal is to get something that's not too complex but is still interesting. Let's set our cur columns to five. And let's increase our curve section length a bit. OK. And you can use uh, these vertex colors to drive the lightning, let's say, if you wanted it to go in a certain direction. Or if you're using a lot of arcs, you can use this, these vertex colors to get some really cool results. But I'm not going to be using them for my attack. Then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of jitter. OK. Now, normally, you can export this right out of the lab's lightning node. But for Unreal, the scale is different. So you need to drop down a transform node. So drop down a transform node, set it to 100. Then you're going to drop down a FBX ROP. And we are going to use this to export our lightning into the contents folder of our Unreal project. So let's call that lightning charge 01. So now let's bring this lightning inside of our Unreal project. So let's bring in our geometry. If you're using vertex color, be sure to set this to replace. And you can just copy my settings for bringing in your geometry. Hit import all. And we have our geometry. So now we need to make a material for this before we go into Niagara. So right click, material, call this M Lightning. And let's open it up. OK, now we can set the blend mode to translucent and the shading model to unlit. Now let's put down a particle color. This will allow us to control our color from inside Niagara. Put down a multiply, plug that into A, and plug that into emissive color. Now let's put down a dynamic parameter. And the first parameter we're going to call glow. Second parameter we're going to call speed. Third parameter we're going to call contrast. And let's plug that glow into that first multiply. And let's put down another multiply and plug that same glow into the A here. And then we're going to plug that into opacity. Now we're going to put down a panner. And let's plug speed into that. And now let's put down a texture sample. We're just going to put some noise in here. So you can use any noise, but I'm just going to use this one. It really doesn't matter too much which one you use. Plug that into UVs. And then let's put down a cheap contrast. And you can guess that's where this is going. And put the alpha right here. And just put the end result into this multiply. That's what we're looking for. Go back here, and now it's time to create our Niagara system. So we go to FX, Niagara system, empty system. Let's call this charge and open it up. Right click, 
add emitter, simple sprite burst. Let's rename this to charge. And we don't need all the parameters on here. We don't need sprite renderer. We don't need solve force and velocity or scale color. So we can delete those. Under render, let's add mesh render because we want to bring in that mesh that we created in Houdini. Go back to our scene. Let's get the name of this. Mesh renderer, put in our name. There we go. Now we need to put in that material. Hit override materials, hit the plus icon. And before we do that, let's make an instance of that material we created. Get the name, go back here, and add in that instance. As you can see, we can't really see anything, and that's because we need to add in our dynamic parameters. Under particle update, add dynamic material parameters. And let's set the glow to five, the speed to one, and the contrast to 0.2. And as you can see, it kind of looks like there's energy flowing up through our lightning, but we need it to go the opposite way. So change your speed to negative one. Next, we want this lightning to fade out after it comes in. So hit here and type in curve, float from curve. Let's set our beginning value to be five. Hit zoom to fit vertical, zoom to fit horizontal, and then we're going to right click on the curve and add a key. We're going to set it to be really bright and then fade out at a very low opacity. So click this, set the time to 0.3 and the value to 0.1. All right, now we need to add in our color. Set the red to 1000 and the green to 50. Now you can see what we're kind of going for here. Now we need this to spawn maybe many, many times. So let's set the loop count to 20. And right now it's spawning in 20 of these, but they're happening at a duration of every two seconds. It's spawning one in. We need them to be spawning over and over again very quickly. So set the loop duration to 0 0.01, meaning that every 0 0.01 second, a new one of these will spawn in. But right now, they're spawning in all in the same scale and the same rotation. So under particle spawn, type in mesh, initial mesh orientation, and hit this checkbox on rotation and change this to a range. We want it to randomly spawn in at a different range. Of rotations. So now we're getting something interesting, but we don't need the X, so set that to zero, or the Y, so set that to zero. We're going to set the Z to 360. All right. And now what we need is them to spawn in at different scales. So under initialized particle, under mesh scale mode, set it to random uniform, and we're going to set it to 1 to 2.5. And now they're lasting a bit too long. These need to be almost instantaneous. So under initialize particles, set the time to a range, random range float, and we want it to be 0.1 to 0.2. They're coming in really, really quickly, and they're not staying around very long. All right, next we need to bring this into our scene and we need to have it spawning above our character and going into his sword. So let's set that up. Currently in my scene, I just have a rectangle light set up and my knight character inside a blueprint. If we open this knight blueprint, you can see all I have here is my knight character, he plays an animation, and the sword spawns into his hand. We need to set up the lightning that we just made coming down into his sword. But because this only has for, happens for a second, what we can do is have it be targeted to his hand and just move it up a bit to target the sword. So after the delay, put down a spawn system attached, and then we're going to take our knight character, which is called sword and shield casting, and we're going to drag that down into attach to component. Inside the system template, let's choose our charge. If we play this, we can see that the lightning is going to spawn, but it's spawning right in the middle of him. We need it to be set to target his hand specifically. 
So inside the knight, go down and let's find his skeletal mesh. And you can actually target the lightning to any of these bones or create a socket and attach it to a socket. I'm just going to attach it to this right hand index 4. I have the name right here, so I'm just going to copy and paste it. But feel free to type it. And then if we play this, you can see that we need to move it up a little bit so it's going into his sword. So I'm just going to raise it in the Z by 100. All right, that looks good. So next what we need to do is I want to have a lot of lightning coming out of the hilt of his sword. So it looks like it's being electrocuted and charged up for an attack. So let's go back inside Houdini and create another lightning effect and then set that up in Niagara. Back in Houdini, we have our lightning. Let's make a copy of this and call it Hilt C for Hilt Charge. Let's go in and get rid of these add nodes and drop down a sphere. Let's set it to polygon and change the frequency to 10. Let's drop down a mountain. With the mountain, we're going to set the amplitude to 2. We're going to make a copy. Then on the second one, we're going to set it to be a bit bigger. So set the uniform scale to 4 and the mountain amplitude to 4. Let's bring these into the merge. Turn off that other lightning as well. Okay. Now let's go into settings and set our lightning arcs to be 10. Let's go to our contact spread. Let's change this to be 3. And then for our end point, let's set that to 9. Okay. Now let's go down to our shape and let's adjust that a little bit. And then under our curve section length, make that a little bit different. And let's go back here, change the spread a little bit. Yeah, that looks a bit better. Just something interesting. Okay. Now, let's go into our noise, change that to sinuoid. Change that. Actually, it's not really doing anything. Okay, just leave it like that. Now we can come in here and we can change some of these pieces however we want. And we can get rid of any pieces that look distracting. So I'm going to get rid of this piece. And I think that's the only one that really jumps out to me. Let's scale it up. Let's rotate it a bit. <clears throat> All right. Move it down. Let's take this, move it. Just trying to create something interesting where it's kind of like a spiky explosion from a certain point. Just like our other lightning strike, we're going to be instancing this inside of Niagara. Bring this up. All right, let's go with that. So let's export this into our project. And we're going to call this, let's export this into our project. And we're going to call this Hilt C. Okay, let's bring this over to Unreal. Now inside Unreal, we need to create a emitter for our lightning that's going to go around our hilt. So let's just take our Niagara emitter that we used before, copy it, and let's rename it to Hilt Charge. Let's open that up, and we're going to change the mesh here. So we're going to change it to the hilt mesh that we just made. You can see we already have something already. Let's go into the dynamic material parameters. And since this is going to be really fast, let's just take the glow and let's just set it to 5. And let's change our contrast to 0.1. Right? 
Now, in the initialized mesh orientation, this is going to be randomly spawning and rotating around our hilt, and it can be coming from anywhere. So we can change this x to 1 and this y to 1. Side here, we can change the loop duration to be something a little bit slower. So let's change each one to be coming in at 0 0.04 seconds. Next, what we need to do is we need to bring this into our scene. So let's go to our night. We already have this one set up with the spawn system attached. So let's just do that exact same thing and plug it right in with the delay because it's going to delay a little bit after the first one strikes. So let's just change the delay to 0 0.05, just a really short delay. And then under system template, let's change that to hilt. Hilt charge. And in the Z, Let's move it up, not as high as the other lightning, but let's move it up by like 50. See how that looks. Obviously, there's a few issues here. Uh, let's go to our hilt, and let's go to initialize particles, and let's change the scale that it can come in as. So let's change that to 0.1 to 0.6. And see how that looks. A little bit small, so let's change it to 0.2. 0.7. Now let's try. Yeah, let's try. Let's keep it at 0.7. So let's do 0.7.3. That looks about right, but I think the lifetime is a little bit weird on some of these. So let's change the lifetime from 0.1 to. Let's just set all lifetimes to be between 0.1 to 0.1. 0.13. Very, very subtle. 